Hello there, it's Linda Beth from Thin the Tip. I wanted to do a sort of a rough scrape review uh, or introduce those of you that have not seen me do a rough scrape to what that is for me. Um, so I'm going to try to do this using Adobe Rush Premiere, I guess it's called, which I've never used before. So this will be its maiden voyage, so to speak. All right, so the rough scrape for me is about basically kind of roughing out the structure of the reed. Um, and getting the angles set up and the smoothness of the, the cane scrape going early in the process. When I'm really careful about how I set up the tip and how it slips forward at this point, that seems to help me get my reeds vibrating more quickly and to the end result much more easily, I think. So... Um, I'm going to do this in a slightly unorthodox way because of the fact I, I never know what people are tying at these reeds that I am using. This is a Caleb minus one shape. Um, and I believe this is on a, well, this is on a new staple. So I'm trying to figure out if I like these or not, just so you can see what that is. Um, but they're 47 millimeter staples. And I tied this one off at about 72, almost 73. Uh, about probably about 72 and a half. So the first thing I will do is I will measure back from the tip and I will go maybe about five or six millimeters. And for those of you who are new, I think it's helpful to sort of put a mark on the side of the cane um, so that you can kind of see it. Those of you that shape the cane will notice that it's probably just a little bit underneath where the ears have been removed. And then when I start scraping on the tip, I don't start where the pencil mark is. I start at the tip because everything I want to slope down towards the front. And I find that to be a little easier. So I'll start with little strokes here. Kind of break through the bark and then extend back to that pencil line, always going forward and off the end of the, the reed. So you end up getting something that looks a little bit like that, like half a W almost. And then I'll do the same thing here. And I spend a lot of time sort of working that front part of the tip because I don't want to see a bump. I don't want to get extra cane. I want to be able to see just a hint of a spine there. When this is done, I will do some backlighting photos so you can see what it looks like um, when it's backlit. But you can already tell how much I am sort of angling this down to where I'm going to clip it off. So I turn it over and I'm going to do the exact same thing. Start with little strokes at the top and then lengthen back to where that pencil mark is. And you don't have to go crazy. You'll get a better feel for this the more you do it. I also will alter my rough scrape depending on the humidity levels and the time of year. In the wintertime, it's usually a little bit thicker than in the summer. Um, right now we're in transitioning into fall, which means it's always going to be kind of a bit of an adventure. But as long as you set it up so that it slopes down and it's still nice and smooth like that, you're in good shape. And don't be concerned about that little hole you see there. That's because I ripped off the corner. It is a bit tricky to do this with the camera in front of you. So cut me a little slack. Okay, so now I'm checking that slope and uh, it looks okay. I'm gonna do a little quick, yeah, that's what I thought. I just did a backlighting thing. So I do need to smooth this out just a little bit more to make it a little bit more even. Not using a lot of pressure, not trying to really thin the tip, just more or less break through those first few layers and get it so that it's very, there, yeah, that looks a lot better. And then we'll do the same thing on this side too. Kind of even it up. 
There we go. The other thing I want you to notice when I'm working in this phase, a lot of what I'm doing is pushing a little bit of pressure up with my bottom finger. See how my, my finger kind of changes color a little bit? And my thumb kind of pushes down. It's almost like I'm kind of pinching like this. That helps me get nice, um, smooth and controlled um, strokes. Some people suffer from chatters, and I think it's because they're trying to do it all with with your knife hand, and it really does help to learn how to use your your fingers, your especially this one, and your thumb to kind of help your knife. And if those of you that are nervous. If you're, you know, sort of an inexperienced reed maker and you're nervous about this, just put a Band-Aid on your first finger and you've got a little extra insurance. Okay, so how did I do? I didn't do so bad. It's just a rough estimate. So now what I think is worth explaining is that this does not mean that my tip is going to be gigantically huge. This area is still pretty thick. This is kind of the transition from the heart heart, I mean, from the tip into the heart. So when I really start to refine the tip, it's going to get shorter. This is just a rough scrape. I'm just worried about keeping the angle and the point where it starts to slope down the same on both blades. So now I'll rough in the heart, which means I'm going to break through the bark, put the spine in, and I'll probably stop that scrape about 10 millimeters or so, just so that I don't try to do too much. So again, just kind of eye measure and put a couple marks on the side so you kind of have an idea of how far to go. And then it's the same idea. Start where your scraping ends and work backwards. So just a little bit of pressure and then you can lengthen back to that pencil line. And I don't do a lot here because I don't want to. I want to keep my heart pretty substantial. I'll leave maybe a little bit of rail here. That can vary depending on your, your um, gouge. And then when I switch to this side, I really am going to make my spine prominent because I'm going to roll my reed a little bit so that I'm exposing the side of the reed a little bit more. It makes it easier to put that spine in. So same idea, start at the top, a little bit of strokes, lengthen back to that pencil line, always making sure that you kind of blend it into where you've stopped. And as your stroke gets wider, you end up taking more. Now, right now, I've got some bark in the spine. See, there it is. We don't want bark in the spine at this stage. So that just means I have to make my stroke a little wider, a little closer to that. Turn my reed a little bit on the other side. There we go. And now the bark is gone. Flip it over and do the same thing. Once you get used to rough scraping, it is actually a pretty fast process. You just want to be very careful about evenness and proportion and angles. And you're all probably thinking, well, yeah, isn't that what we are supposed to do anyway? <laughs> But point being, if you take the rough scrape for granted and you just were like, well, I'll just break through the layers and that's good. And you're not careful about making sure that things are sloping in the right way and even and there's bark up the spine. You can ask for trouble later. So see, I'm not quite getting all that bark up. I don't like the way that spine looks up there. The more bulk there is when it dries out, the more it's going to kind of want to pull away from itself, and that's what can contribute to loose sides. So it's worth just being a bit nitpicky about that and trying to get rid of that bark in the in the heart. And then I usually take my fingers because I like to make sure it, it feels about the same on each blade, and that looks pretty good. Then we look at it from the side. And again, we want to see everything kind of go smoothly. Vroom, down to the hinge. It's pretty good. Okay. Back is the easiest part, I think, because you barely just, you barely break through the bark and you want to stop about four millimeters from the thread. So don't go all the way down to the thread. Go stop about right there. 
Okay. And again, same process, just start right where the your scraping ends. Follow that sort of path that you've set up for your spine and extend it. But this time make sure you don't wipe out the the rails. And as you can tell, I'm barely taking any kink out. It's just nice and smooth. I'm not using a lot of pressure. I'm just kind of letting my knife break through the cane. Really kind of just focusing on that spine, making sure that spine is looking good. Yeah, that looks pretty good. You won't see in, in my rough scrape, you don't see a big difference in color between the heart and the back. And that's for a reason. It's because I use the back I, after, I, after I have sort of balanced the, the highs and the lows, I use the back to kind of dial it in. And if I take too much out of the back too soon, I find that that makes that more difficult for me. So same thing on the other blade, kind of start, start where your scraping ends and just bend, blend backwards. So I do this because, and I'm using like barely any pressure. I'm just kind of swiping on top of the cane, you know, getting those little fine little snow kind of shavings. The less pressure you use, the smoother your stroke will be. If you are trying to go fast or your knife is getting dull, you'll get chatters and, and, um, those, those little irritating sort of bumps and catches where you don't want them. So there you go. And that's it. So I'm going to take some pictures and I'll include those in the video so you can see what it looks like in terms of the thicknesses. And then I will, once I even everything all up, I'll clip it open and start getting it vibrating. All right, there you go. Have a great day, everybody. All right, so now I'm gonna show you um, what it looks like after I've clipped it open. So this is what my rough scrapes will tend to look like. You can see there's a little spine in the tip, just the hint of one, which I like. The heart and the back are pretty much the same color. The spine, I could probably go back up and do a little bit more there. But the spine's right in the middle, um, very even. And this is what I really wanted to show you is that slope towards the tip. Now, I know some of you are going to be like, ooh, she ripped off the corner. Yes, I did. That's why you see that little tiny gap there. Because I did. I ripped off the corner when I did my rough scrape. I'm not going to worry about that because I know that I'm going to be clipping this reed as I make it. And it'll end up with a straight corner so don't judge <laughs> anyways this is the basic premise for me I would let it dry out like this and then tomorrow I'm going to go ahead and balance this out and try to get it in the ballpark all right so hope that helps and is at least interesting and gives my students some helpful reminders how much do we love this thread Shahrazad by squarely stash it's my new fave all right, have a good night, everybody.